Set um, I'm a Debbie here offering a general reading as always explore what resonates within. I'm doing this a little bit different today. I have a little bit of a channel message that I've scribbled out and then kind of a two-part reading today looking at what's orbiting around as well as messages I got yesterday and then what are you co-creating. Um, with a general reading it's important to know that parts might apply. It's more of a concept to consider not so much a c concrete answer to what it is that you're growing through at this time. I like to speak to you about what comes through because on some level it just feels like if it doesn't come through it's like a clog to it like I gotta get it out like like for whatever reason <laughs> I've been to share with you which is outside of my comfort zone um, and I, I you know, based on my experiences, it's like, I want you to know you're not alone. There's a lot that happens in the ethers that happens in this place between like, initially, I just want to say right and wrong, but beyond what concepts we've grown to understand in the material, because there's so much more happening, especially now. It's just, it's mind blowing. And I appreciate those of you who receive um, a personal reading from me or share your stories with me because it, it, it just validates or further confir confirms what it is that's happening. There's information is happening so much more quickly and our thoughts are penetrating the minds of others, each other, and are being received from above on such a delicate, <laughs> it's, it's delicate the way in which our thoughts are actually manifesting our reality. And I think we've gone far too long ignoring the fact that if we just keep thinking and talking to ourselves all as well. No, we need to turn that volume down and allow the divine to work through us. So how is the divine working through you right now? How is the divine working through you right now? What are you receiving on multiple levels? I'm going to start here. So I do have something that just scribbled down. Like I, I've been sitting with these messages and the divine was like, you're not ready yet. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. And then I just sat down and scribbled that. So I'll put that back behind <laughs> me. We'll start here. I guess I'm kind of working through that idea that we receive information from each other. And you don't always know why you're drawn to a particular human being, a place, a project, why you're inspired or propelled in this way, like why this flame is lit within you to connect to another, to produce this product, to write this book, to step forward in this community. There's something bigger at play here. And it feels like you've been activated to go full steam ahead. And in the process, like you had that act activation and now the brakes are kind of put on because you're like, well, hold up. <laughs> you said X, Y, Z is going to happen. And now these other things are happening. And so there's this subtle realm that's being activated within you. And I'm going to speak mainly to connection, but please apply this as it resonates. If you are in a committed, loving relationship, perhaps it's showing up in another way. Again, a program or some sort of product, book, uh, or service that you're destined to uh, produce or share with the world. Um, it seems to me that our suffering comes in connection. Like we want to connect. We're social creatures. I know there's those of us that are introvert, introverts, but you know, we want to belong. We want to connect and we want to feel love seen and heard. Right. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to share what I was scribbled out. So the twin flame concept, you probably heard me say like, uh, disregard twin flames because there is to me this toxicity of like waiting. So let me just give you, hopefully I can read my writing. Um, so the twin flame concept on this idea of there's a split, there's a split seeking another half, 
right? That we're not content and whole as ourselves, that at the cellular level at birth, the two split, and then we find each other in a lifetime, okay? And you might know more about the history of Twin Flame, and, you know, again, you, you, as I always try to say, is you don't have to agree with me. You don't have to agree with me. When I think about Twin Flame, I like to remind you that we are no longer, so much for reading, <laughs> we are no longer in this timeline in which we wait for communication, right? So I'm just going to talk about the material at this time. I'm not even going into telepathic right now. We're not waiting for a phone call. We're not waiting for an answer. We're not waiting for a text. We're not waiting for an email. That all happens very rapidly with the technology we have at our access today. Consider the idea that the twin flame concept, and I'm pulling this one out of my ass, was brought forth in a time in which you needed to wait. You had to go to the market and hear from so-and-so some gossip. <laughs> Or you had to wait at home for someone on their horse to bring you a love letter, right? We're not there, all right? So we need to reevaluate the way in which we open ourselves up to information and the way in which we allow connections to unfold on the multiple levels in which they are magnified within and through you. I feel like based on the readings I give, most of the information you re receive and the intensity you experience romantic partnerships is not leading us in the direction of twin flame concept. It's leading us more towards the magnitude of your gifts. Like you are strong in your intuitive insights. The confusion happens in the mental body and the social script. So what's been laid down before you receive this experience belittles what you experience in the telepathic dream and ethers and what you know to be true in your heart world. Give me heart math. Always give me the word heart math and I haven't even studied heart math. I just have looked it up a time or two. I feel like it's just the um, science behind the power of the heart center. Let me take a look at this to see if I uh, missed anything. Okay, so the idea that we are meant to come together. So the twin flame concept tells us there's a split, there's a divide, that we're not whole and complete without each other. Perhaps it's so that in some lifetime, some previous experience, we were left splintered in our emotional, fractured in some way, they're giving the word fractured, in our emotional, mental, sexual bodies, physical bodies, whatever it is. So whatever plane we're operating on has been splintered from our reality. And so there's this pull back. And perhaps we are not complete until we experience each other or have a particular experience that activates a newfound awareness to dismember that hold, that shame, that blame, that point in a particular timeline, it doesn't have to be this lifetime, that it has to be honored for you to wake the flock up. And it happens through you and the intensity is even is higher when there is romantic and sexual attraction because then we have certain value systems and desires and vulnerabilities at play think in terms of a romantic interest it's different than a friendship it's different than a family interest in which our family values come to play social script is always an issue our emotional body our insecurities right our sexual and emotional desires our need for fulfillment and contentment to be seen felt and heard right we dump all this on one person <laughs> and in some regard it requires us to come back together to activate receive 
and relieve ourselves of the previous hold in another or this lifetime. Like we continue to hold, play out the cycle until we choose to let it go so that we can grow anew. An idea. Now, does it sound like I'm talking about soul contracts? Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. But I feel like it's important once in a while. I kind of jump over the idea of twin flames and just say, like, no, we're not going to do that. And the reason being is I don't want anyone to be on hold for romance, to be on hold or held captive based on illusion, based on one level of understanding. All those levels of understanding have to come together in order for you to come together physically or in a full commitment in this lifetime. On some level, the confusion exists in which with your intuitive insight, you sense the emotions, you sense the desires. The divine gives you the heads up. The divine gives you the information. All of that could be counter to the way in which that human interacts with you in the material in this lifetime. And this is different than the facade. It's because you're capable of reading into the depths of that person. Part of that is your gifts and part of that is the lineage to which you operated on multiple timelines before you incarnated in this lifetime. And so there's a multitude of activations that happen when you come together physically prior to that intimate connection. And then there is the manifestation that may or may not carry out. So what happens, especially if you're like one of those high functioning divine feminines. And I've heard this when I've talked to women in the dating realm that they're like, I have X, Y, and Z. I'm most successful. This is going on in my life. And yet I'm single. Okay. Well, sign up for me. I decided I'm just going to call myself independent. I kind of like that title better than single. <laughs> and if someone asks, I'm under contract. <laughs> but it's like, you have to understand that we operate on a different fre frequency, that you operate on a different frequency and you're paving the way to new grounds to which in this lifetime, the standards of the divine masculine and divine feminine operate on completely different playing fields. And we can look back at the history of the wife. We can look back at the history. If we go back through feminism of what's been allotted to us in the material before this time. And so the definition of being successful as a feminine, as opposed to being successful as a masculine can vary and then upset the apple cart on some level to which it creates some chaos in coming together in this lifetime. The unit, the family unit is very different in this like century of this timeline than it was in the past and yet our minds regardless of what past life we're looking at operate on a different playing field and they operate on a different playing field in the way in which we come together today it's filtered through that splintered reality to which we left each other in the past in previous lifetimes it's encoded within us and somehow awakened within us when we come together and we meet and it's beyond our understanding of the mental body. It's beyond our comprehension. And yet the emotional body is completely activated. The heart center is completely activated and the sexual centers as well. You cannot deny the existence of previous lives when you have this deep level of connection you can't or i don't know how you can I always say you can <laughs> you can disagree with me and here i am honing this one down i hope this right makes sense let's look at the the questions they gave me and then again we'll look at the two different decks i hope i would oh, I tease over there in the center so i've found and i've talked to in, in general in personal readings that occasionally like it happens where 
someone orbits your field before they enter your reality. And so you're getting, and to me, I feel like this is the divine introducing you in the energy bodies before they're introduced in the physical form. And it's taken new heights. Now, I'm going to just table that thought. <laughs> so I want to ask you, so when people come to me and they're like, is this my person? Is this my twin flame? Is this the one, right? It's a very different answer when you have a soul mission. It's very different when you have this heightened reality in the ethers. Okay. You're not a dumbass. <laughs> and I'm sorry if you don't get into it. I guess I don't mean to like think of like just mm. you're being called for more. So these con connections mean more. It's relative to the individuals coming together in this lifetime. So what information are you receiving in the dream world? And this is going to help you. They're, they're preparing you in some way to meet. It's, they're giving you information. So if a lot can happen in the dream world. I don't want to go too far into it because it's going to be, it's going to be like for, this reading is going to be way too long. Um, but when it comes to connections, they're kind of introducing you. Their souls are preparing to meet. Your souls are communicating you're delivering information to each other before you meet in the material so the cellular body is being awoken to them that's why it's unforgettable when you do meet eye to eye uh, it's important to note too how are you feeling when you wake up the emotional body is going to tell you something it's going to give you some regard of what that exchange in the ethers is presenting like what needs to be recovered, unearthed, and released. The emotional frequency that that you feel when you wake up is going to give you a lot of information. And then because of that intensity, so you're given information, you might be receiving telepathic information, right? You might be receiving that information in the dream world. So then you're just expecting, and you're just expecting, this must be the one because it's so intense and so bizarre, right? Not exactly. Not exactly. And this is where the confusion of the twin flame or people call it a false flame, whatever. It's just not, I don't know. I don't even go on my thoughts on marriage. Uh, <laughs> so consider when you do me in the material, so I hope these questions help you because people ask like, is this the one or why is this intense? Who do I pick? Like, hopefully these questions will help. Do you feel drained by this connection? Like, do you feel depleted or is your strength that you draw from above being siphoned off to them? Okay. And so in the twin flame, a lot of times, and with you as empaths and light workers and all your gifts, you often attract a narcissist because they're like, there's fuel for my fucking fire. Right. <laughs> and so notice, are they going to pull from you? Are you a power source for someone? Right. Do you feel depleted in any way following? the connection. Regardless of whether you feel depleted or not, I do feel it's important to check in with yourself and ask for protection every once in a while. Just do that meditation where regardless of whether you're depleted or feel uplifted to check in with yourself. So do you understand what's happening within you and what you're picking up off of that other person? I'm really good at confusing the two. What is the context of this connection? This is extremely important. Okay especially when it comes to someone siphoning off you or feeling like you're blindsided. You're like, how did I get here? <laughs> how did this happen? <laughs> right? When are you at your best? When did you meet this individual? Right? At what point in your reality did you come together in the material? How are you? How did you feel when you met? Like, were you at your best or were you not so well? Like, give yourself a break if you're feeling guilty over abuse or whether, you know, you followed this prompting, so to speak, and thought this was the one and went full speed ahead, and it turns out to not be the best connection for you. So consider the context to which you met. This is going to give you a little bit more information, right? Because let's say if your frequency was higher, or you're feeling better, or you weren't ill, for example, you probably wouldn't open your floodgates to this individual, right? You wouldn't probably wouldn't fall 
track to manipulation if you are at 100% or 110, hear me? Some cases they want you to go through manipulation, they want you to go through these experiences because it's part of not only your soul contract but your soul mission to help others and teach others how to work with that energy. On the positive side, how does this connection inspire your growth? What are you learning from this? What are you learning about yourself? It's very easy for you to tune into the other person, to see their insecurities, to see why they behave in that way, to justify their behavior. You're really good at that because you can see those deep layers. Turn that around and look inside yourself. What are you learning? How are you benefiting? How is your soul calling for growth? And what is the optimal step forward through this experience for your soul's growth, for the greater good of you both, or if there's more, if you're poly, whatever. Check in. How do you feel when you connect with that individual? When you sit in your their own energy, how do you feel? I feel like I already talked to that to really, and this is hard. I feel like it's really hard <laughs> because sometimes we don't like that physical distance. Like we want that, we want that call, we want that text, we want to see each other, right? But you might need to pull back and check in with yourself and not have that communication, especially if you're picking up on information from them from afar on a consistent level. If your sleep's disrupted, your emotions are disrupted, your thought process is disrupted by the connection you have with that other person, you're going to need to pull your energy back to check in with you and make sure you wash yourself clean energetically. Might need a core cut. <laughs> Notice after you have met someone, what has changed in your emotional, physical, and energy bodies since you met or prior to? Like notice the progression, notice the shift, right? I've noticed this where it's like, I felt like I had taken care of something and then I meet somebody and later on I'm like, oh, that's popping up again, right? And it felt really random. It's not to say you don't have your own work to do. It's not to say that you don't cast all your emotional baggage on someone else. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying based on your baseline of how you've been functioning and all of a sudden you shift, is that you or are you picking up on their energy? Patterns. Patterns are important here because you have to notice like what patterns are happening through the connection, what patterns are happening through your partners, through like your work here. Because it's people are like, what's my sole purpose? What's my mission? It's not a one and done. It's not a clear cut. Just like your soulmate isn't a clear cut answer, right? So look at the patterns of the way in which you learn to grow through connections. Look at the patterns that are persistent in your intimate connections. There possibly is a life purpose in the way that you connect with people on a deep intimate level to help heal. And that healing is more of like grassroots healing <laughs> and not so much on the clinical level, but it's happening through you, through your physical form, through your emotional body and the experience to which you have. It's important that you maintain your boundaries and follow through on your mission. That is important first and foremost, because we become tethered to that person, right? You become tethered in that connection that has such a deep dive. But there are times in which the divine is going to give you instructions to go, to move on to the next. Now, I'm not saying like disregard another human, but you have to know when the cycle is complete, the lessons learn or this, like you've outgrown a connection. Sometimes we outgrow a connection, right? Whether you're talking about telepathic communication, whether you're talking about a connection, think about your garden, right? Or think about gardening, and I don't really think about gardening. That way in which thoughts infiltrate or emotional um, manipulation infiltrates, it's like you have to continue to weed your garden, right? That's your work, that's your due diligence, right? And occasionally something has to be transplanted. Think about you as moving on to the next mission or moving beyond the connection that felt so intense at some point. It's like you being transplanted. It's time. Your work is done there. Know when your work is done. If you're having trouble deciding if your work is done, think about your emotional needs. More often than not, you put yourself aside to assist others. 
more often than not, your trauma and your empathetic, like, dev teaches you to give and give and give. That's probably your pattern. Might not be. Consider, too, when you dial back, when do you feel supported and how? What do you need? And as this connection has evolved, as you have grown, what needs are being met at this time? Are you being undervalued or is it time to step it up? Do you need more than what's being presented, right? Pay attention to the patterns. Um, how is your life in or out of balance? This comes back to the context to which you were brought together and notice what areas of your life are in or out of alignment. And that might also show you like where you're at energetically, emotionally, and socially at the time in which you need, you met to then give you more information to continue on your soul mission. I do hope that help. Um, I need to get a drink and then I will, uh, hold on one second and then I'll move forward with the cards. Thanks for your patience. So orbiting and back to this idea of feeling someone before you meet someone or that lingering presence of someone. And sometimes it's, it's someone from the past. And we usually talk about people from the past only in Mercury or retrograde, but really it's like mentally answering the call or allowing that call to continue. One of the decks I do have out is simply uh, planets. So you might take a planet and go ahead and look it up or look at where it is in your your birth chart or where it is and if you do birth charting um, for the connections you're in you might look at where those that particular planet is within both of your charts um, I did do a general reading um, a while back and I don't remember but I remember the title of what's orbiting in your field because again you like sense it before it happens but it doesn't mean then it's going to be like the end result. <laughs> and I think that's where we kind of get hit, like a hiccup. You're like, um, or maybe that's just me. Um, you're like, oh, I'm feeling it on this other worldly level. This must be the one. Not exactly. <laughs> Not exactly. Those are the cards I had to say. And regardless of what you're feeling and sensing, we all have free will. Why I have another set of cards out for uh, creating. A king of song. I, I, I like feel embarrassed to say <laughs> you're simply the best, better than all the rest. I don't know any more lyrics that. It's kind of. I don't even know what year that is or who sings that. Just as powerful it is for you, it's powerful that other person is just two different languages are spoken to either validate or um, conceptualize it, conceptualize the connection. Because I, I feel like it's a whirlwind for, <laughs> for both parties. And it, I'm, I'm finding it's happening more and more for many. And I think, again, that's this blend of like where we're at in the, the ethers and then where you're at with your spiritual gifts. I do hope this is making some sense. <laughs> I, they said no. So you have a choice. You have a choice. <laughs> there was, um, I think, a telepathic communication like that, um, like an, like an octopus that you like, kind of reach out, feel, reach out, and feel. And if you've read the soul of an octopus, it's, it's quite intense in the way uh, which they experience their reality through tactile, you know, tactile experience happens on this other level. That's they feel to receive. You are receiving through the feeling bodies whether you're touching someone or not. I mean, it's up to you to allow your tentacles to continue to reach out or pull them back in based on the information you receive. And so it might take some time, which makes sense because it took time 
usually when I have like a prompting for reading, I get a lot of information very quick. This like happened in segments slowly because it requires some processing on your part and a new perspective to override the patterns. Okay, we're staying. We're going there. Hangman, speaking of pers perspectives, so a new perspective on the board, you know, spinning it around, um, and understanding what needs to be cleaned up in the emotional body, bodies, and the tower. Change. Like your status quo being disrupted in some way, or what you know to be true, you know, like this earth shaking experience in some way. Um, just because it's earth shaking doesn't always mean it's manipulate manipulation. I have trouble with that <laughs> like, um, because they're both kind of, or everyone's kind of working on this like on unchar in our uncharted territories, but yet also to alleviate the intensity might the way in which we alleviate the intensity of the connection might backfire. That's where that idea of like the push and pull energy is and that withdraw and retreat that is so commonly spoke to in the twin flame journey comes up. Because you do need time to process and there should be some reflection and refinement in the way in which you come correct with each other, right? You don't always give someone the smack down although you can. <laughs> it's up to you. You do what you want. You do you. Are there any planetary like, hang, hangman about it? I, I do have a small, a short video on the hangman, but I do feel like the hangman perspective is like, it's like the steps guided from above. So the feet as above, so, so below, you know, it's flipping the human upside down. The feet are guided by the stars. And so there's the planetary alignment, which give me the word gestates so it, that's this period of unknown is like a gestation period to what will be given birth to in this reality pluto um ever understand the next three years pluto will circle around and it will continue to be more intense for us i could be wrong so if pluto calls to you pluto's check out where pluto is in your birth chart or the connection to which you are questioning um oh we got a lot here Hmm. Okay, so Mars, how does the Mars energy impact you? Okay, uh, and you might even some a lot of uh, you might even look that up. What's that cause to you? It's just levels, levels, the levels of what orbits around us. Uh, Jupiter, so what's being expanded, what's being illuminated, right? Mm, see floor, the depths, the depths to which you experience your reality. And what's being awakened, uh, there's far more happening in other timelines. This is, they're giving me the word capsule. Um, it's almost like your love letter is a capsule, a time capsule. <laughs> that's what I want to say. Um, oh, that's, I was like, wow, is that my light smoking? <laughs> no, it's the, it's the diffuser. <laughs> I got nervous there for a second. Um, Crab Nebula, that calls out. Excuse me. And this has more of a cellular look, whereas some of the other nebulas kind of look like um, an hourglass, right? Anything about your sixth sense that would be beneficial? Cleaning up. Your cleaning house. It, it, some of us have to do the work to clean house, but you can't enable the other. <laughs> But you're being called to level up. We both are actually in the connection you're considering. You're justified in moving forward wholehearted. Uh, justified. That's what I was saying. Justified moving forward. Artesian. Um, skilled craft worker makes or creates material objects partly or entirely by hand. Um, 
You are part of God's creation and the connections to which you feed or dismember are part of your creation this lifetime. Star seeds. Star seeds are advanced spiritual beings who possess spiritual and scientific knowledge that date back hundreds and thousands of years. I do believe if you're listening to this, you're an earth angel, star seed, light worker, karma lord, you go on. There's a big list. <laughs> There's a big list, but you're you're definitely a cut above the rest. Oh, but that's where the song comes in. Better than all the rest. <laughs> I'm like, what? Because <laughs> sometimes you're a little bit more humble and then, then you ought to be if you ought to be anything. There's a someone told me once that if someone tells you should, <laughs> they're, um, it's a, like a red flag. Um, okay, so red flags coming up. Don't ignore the red flags even though there's this deep soul level connection sometimes uh your absence is just what's needed to co-create a new, new reality that's the change that might be the change the unforeseen change is needed mm -hmm. Art artesia I, I like that there's a rope here when we're talking about basically we're talking about cord cutting or cord connections in the ethers mm -hmm. So what are you creating? What are you creating? What do you want to co-create? Um, you want to co-create shame and blame, joy and blessings. Like it's really up to you and how you move through. And that's why you have to look at the patterns within yourself, within the other person, and the way in which your connections play out and the way in which the current connection is playing out. Okay, so don't give someone a pass <laughs> just because you feel empathy. <laughs> What, what will you create for yourself? What will you create for yourself? What will you create for yourself? And thank you for this deck. This deck was a gift. And it was interesting. It was sent to me after I eyed it on TV. Or not on TV. On, I eyed it on um, uh, Amazon. I was like, I had, like, had it in my card or something like that. I don't know why I said I did it on TV. Oh, yeah. Uh, housemates home so if you hear the tv <laughs> um i do apologize sorry you have some music in the background all right one more time i'm gonna shuffle that what are you co-creating not based on distraction or disillusionment but based on the higher good what are you creating are you creating for your comfort zone are you creating for someone else's comfort zone I've been guilty of that. Let me just change, change, change myself, and then I find myself in this dark hole. Like, I'm not doing that shit again. Mm -mm. <laughs> not to say I don't have stuff to look at and work at, work on. And so you have to look at your boundaries. Or what's been shown to me is the idea of personal policy. What's your personal policy? Yeah, and we do amend and adjust our policy, right? Uh, based on the greater good or based on the information we receive or how things change. What are you co-creating for yourself for the greater good? Ten of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. It's up to you. The Queen of Pentacles is capable of creating. So in the material, it's really up to you uh, what you put your energy to, but you're stepping closer and closer to home grounds, uh, stepping closer and closer to you as a solid being on this planet, bottom deck. There is confusion. There is confusion. I get it. I get it. That's why I'm here chatting with you <laughs> of what's being delivered to you because a lot of your assignments, a lot of your connections, a lot of what's received, a lot of what's orbiting is counter to what you assume it should be. It ought to be. And you get to create your reality based on that, what you receive. And it's very easy when you're receiving information in the astral about a particular connection to really get drug into that through the emotional body, to get pulled by their emotional experience as, and you assume it to be your own. Really got to check in on what you want to give value meaning to in the material plane and continue to do your work in the emotional body to understand what's your emotional entanglement to heal and grow from and what you're picking up from empathetically for another or telepathically however you want to define it 
there is a road to recovery through your experience and again some of it is about cutting the cords and moving on if you think about um, connections like what what energy can you live with for the long term sometimes those heavy hits those nine of wands energies they hit quick but they they burn out quick that like the energy of that connection burns out quick and possibly I know I've had that too where it's like you feel all this in the emotional the dream world and you even get physical sensation then next thing you know you're like feeling it again you're like oh man what's going on it's all this confusion but that's part of the work you're brought here to do and so based on the the intuitive input the emotional input the energetic input you give how can you send a direct order to transmute the energies and heal the connection you're brought in to heal the connections you're brought here to heal the pattern it happens a little bit slower than we'd like because it takes time to learn it but what is your wish fulfillment girl of the pearl earring i do have a video on girl of the pearl earring actually And there's a lot of value and emphasis put on social standards, social construct that brings us guilt if we don't adhere to those standards, right? You've got to look at what you want. The divine is going to give you the capital A, not society. And a capital A, I'm sorry if like your scarlet letter, like you read that, but it, that's not what I mean. I mean like the divine loves you regardless. And you're brought here to work in the trenches. You're brought here to work heart to heart. It's going to take time to understand the energetic and emotional code to which you are learning to embody. You're helping people to break free of their imprisonment. I love that. You're helping people break free of their imprisonment. But it comes through you learning to work through the confusion of your own and recognize your own value. Consistency is key. Uh, 32, 5, practice tenderness. Tenderness to yourself, tenderness to others. Part of the empathy is just understanding, regardless of what move you make, is understanding where it comes from, not enabling based on where it comes from, but sending love as you cut that cord, sending love as you close out that chapter, as you close the door. Unleash your passion. Okay, well, that's a completely turn. That's a turnabout. That's <laughs> well, a one passion, the queen of. Okay, so I guess the ba the best way I can put this is sexual healing and understanding and forgiveness. That there is, we are embarking on a deeper level by connecting physically or intimately that could be where some of the activations do occur um, you have to decide what you will and will not allow and who you will and will not allow in your physical body and know that it does take work once you've had that physical exchange you can imagine how much someone may or may not be pulling in the dream road and the telepathic and the astral that once you connect on a physical level how that might amplify whatever information you're receiving so not to get tangled up in that mess but make a change kindly based on you uh, hummingbird uh, might call an archangel metatron so I would call on your ancestors for support. I would call on your guide team for support and allow them to guide you which direction to take or how deep you want to go with the connection, uh, physically or otherwise. They will give you free will, so it's up to you. You know, that might be part of their destined plan, but it might not be something you're ready to step up to and, and do. Um, and that's where some of the confusion lies because it's really there is no burden they don't want you to feel burdened we want you to be happy and you get to manifest what it is you want so understanding your passion over your guilt and who who receives you well and allows you to be that divine divine feminine that creates you're meant to create you're meant to create on this planet the queen of pentacles knows how to create 
in the material, knows how to manifest and make us, makes moves, makes things happen. Ace or garden girl, whatever it is, right? Based on the planetary alignments, what's coming through for you is your ability to transmute the patterns of the past and the divine masculine and feminine state of being. Your archangels are asking you, they are asking you to call them in to elevate the frequency for the divine feminine rising to create new foundation to which the masculine and feminine operates from. Your passions sometimes can get confused in the ethers by the desires of others. It is your choice. Rise above and have courage, courage to keep your standards high and elevate your frequency because what you deliver, what the divine delivers through you is contingent on the frequency. It's contingent on your free will and they will give you the steps in the material but it comes through in a way that is often uncomfortable for the human to operate on because it is often the step-by-step -step instruction or this bigger picture and yet not the steps the, the, there's this like this commingling they're kind of giving me that word um but know that you will be received that you are loved and only choose those humans that receive you well and allow you to carry out your mission what do you want on this planet what will you manifest and what's starting to come together for you and what will you reject not within yourself but reject in the social construct the social order to which you would consistently play out and like dim yourself down the one thing from from the book just always stood out for me excuse me is only ch children and criminals run so the inner child wanting to run or someone who has done wrong or feels they've done wrong runs what happens when you stand your ground and manifest anew and as you manifest anew what shows up for you for the divine to work through you to carry it out and grow well i do hope this served well uh sending lots of love on your journey thank you so much for listening sharing liking and subscribing